Me? Hi, this is... Yes. And Luke. And Rob. And when we're not watching YouTube videos of Walt Disney World rides... We're geeking on Walt Disney World with Chris and the whole geeking family. Geeking on the new family. Hey, Disney World geeks, Curtis Stone here, and welcome to episode 451 of the Geek and Non Walt Disney World podcast. This week, super geek Dana Anderson shares her extensive Disney World experience and her recent art of animation in a car suite during New Year's Eve. And I've been having fun chatting with Disney World fans and geeks like Dana for over eight years. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. I started the podcast with my daughter, Lindsay. And we started by talking about our Disney World trips, and then we brought on our Disney geeks to tell their trip stories. Our listeners are so positive, caring, generous, and they are experienced Disney geeks. You'll get lots of ideas and tips for your next trip to Disney World from their real-world experiences and trip reports. We encourage a family atmosphere here on the podcast. And before too long, they were calling me the podfather, and we'd love to have you join our geek and family, too. We got an amazing private discussion group in Facebook. Search for Geekin on WDW Family. You can ask questions, share your trip pictures, and engage with one of the best group of Disney World geeks out there on the internet. We're also independent Disney authorized travel agents with Fairy Tale Concierge. Fairy Tale Concierge is an authorized platinum Disney travel agency. We'd love to be your travel guides and help you book your room, tickets, and dining reservations. You'll notice many of our guests on the podcast book their trips or they transfer their trip bookings to the travel and tiers. Yeah, you can book your own trip, connect up with Auntie Judy and Mom. And the best way to do that is by emailing them, travelandtiers at gmail.com. Just check the show notes and you'll see their email as well as mine if you'd like to reach out to us and talk about Disney World. Well, I recorded earlier with Auntie Judy. Got an extra podcast coming out for you this coming Thursday where we answer listener questions with the travel in tiaras and right now i've got a featured trip report with dana anderson she stayed at the art of animation car suite for adults you don't hear about the art of animation very often in these suites fantastic option when you got a good sized party going down to disney world she is a self-proclaimed foodie and you know we love talking about food here on the podcast she does a great job talking about Citricos. She went there for New Year's Eve, the Topolino Breakfast, Via Napoli, Tony's, Chef Mickey's, and then some lounges like the Enchanted Rose. One of my favorites, Spice Road Table. There's a little bar over there. I also asked her her top three favorite treats in Disney World. And then some of the things that she did, like the fireworks from the Grand Floridian Resort. And she's got some great tips, guys, like... Use that same Uber driver that you find when you're down there on vacation and someone that really worked out well for you. I didn't know you could do that. She talks about some other great tips, including automation in the Daz Pass. And everyone is asking about Genie Plus. And she talks about stacking and in her experience using Genie Plus. This is the one of the best ways to learn about this new system when you hear all of our listeners and their experiences. Dana Anderson is a lifelong friend of one of our good friends, Rob Madiri. Thanks, Rob, for referring Dana to us. And thank you for all you geeks who refer your friends to the podcast and to the travel agency. So we can all share in our knowledge and our love for Disney World. Well, my next guest coming on contacted me like beginning of the year. So glad she followed up with me so we could get a, a great trip report. I'm already talking with her. I can tell she is one of us. I can tell she's a geek. So I'm really excited to introduce Dana Anderson. Welcome to the Geekin' Podcast, Dana. Thank you. Very, very excited to be here. Great to have you, Dana. I'm sorry it took so long to get you on. Thanks for following up with me. 
Yeah. 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 You know, our trip last trip happened right after holidays and you guys had your meetup. And I think, uh, you know, it finally dawned on me that we talked, you know, a while ago and I needed to follow up. So I'm glad I did. And you were just telling me you're a good family friend of one of my buddies through the podcast, Rob Madiri. Yes. We have literally known each other since we were very, very small children, family friends. So. Oh, awesome. Yep. He knew I would be a good fit. <laughs> yeah. I told, I told you, Dan, we know geeks when we see them. <laughs> exactly. We can spot each other. <laughs> we find each other. Yes. It's fantastic. Yeah. We always say, you know, there's, there's a lot of people out there. I, I get two kind of reactions when people find out I'm a Disney geek. It's either like, well, whatever. I've, you know, I went there once and I'm never going back or it's, uh-huh. oh my gosh, I have DVC and I, and I go every year and. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. And I always uh, say, you know, even my friends, family will say when someone says, oh, we, we had the worst trip or, you know, something like that. They're like, you need Dana to plan your trip and then you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. Right. Yeah. You got to have some knowledge. And yes. Thanks for joining in and listening to our show. You're saying you've been listening for um, started last year, right? Yes. Yeah. Probably a little less than a year ago. Um, yeah. That Rob had introduced me um, to geeking and I've been hooked. And you're an expert too. I, I know you love the planning aspect, but you still learn some things from our trip reports and our geeks, do you? Yes. You know, even we don't have children, but even that, like it's different aspects of it. My sister-in-law goes sometimes, uh, she's someone who qualifies for the disability pass. So we're just always learning different aspects, you know, different tips, tricks, you know, what's the newest reservation finder or, you know, the (laughs) best room to look for at different hotels. There's always things to learn. You know, we go often. So I can't imagine that someone that does has never gone or goes so infrequently to try to do it on their own. I know it's, it's a horrible thought to see those lost souls in the parks that just showed up at the door. don't know what's going on. Yes. My husband always just looks at me and just shakes his head because when you hear people trying to figure something out, I'm always like, I have to tell them. I have to help <laughs> I them. Know. Is your husband a big geek too? Um, he loves going. He loves, uh, loves Florida and you know, we do go often and he loves it. Uh, awesome. I'm going again in November to run one of the races and he's insisting to go just to go. <laughs> Fantastic. Which race is that? The wine and dine? Yes. Wine and dine. Yep. Very I'll be good. running the 5k and one of my best friends runs the whole weekend. Fantastic. Well, we like to ask our guests that come on the show, some of their Walt Disney World fun facts, and you sent me a few here. What's your first fun fact? So one of our mottos, again, we don't travel with children, but one of our mottos is that we go on vacation. You know, we thankfully do go often, so we don't have to always run around like crazy people, Mm. Um, but we eat, we drink, we (laughs) lay by the pool, and we enjoy ourselves and make a true vacation out of it. Fantastic. Yeah, that is one big advantage of going often. You don't feel stressed to hit every single attraction. I mean, do you kind of look for, do you keep like a little must do list of little things that you want to do? Yeah. I, uh, I use a Google sheet, my Google spreadsheet (laughs) that I keep for every trip. It keeps my packing list there. I have a calendar version reservation list, the whole nine yards. And, you know, especially for, you know, food and wine or for flower and garden festivals. I try to make like a short list of snacks and drinks we want making sure I get like the Ratatouille virtual queue in the morning and things like that. You know, we have ones we have to do. We love Pirates of the Caribbean. It's our favorite, you know, old school ride. But, you know, if God forbid we miss something else, it's okay. I totally agree with you. All right. And what's your second fun fact? Oh, geez, you're testing me because now I forget that fast. Isn't that hysterical? <laughs> I had you to look uh, in the chat. <laughs> I am. I'm literally going to look in the chat. I uh, I had to like uh, think about it, which is hysterical. Oh, the fact that we, we bring gifts. Yes, we started this. Um, we normally go for Halloween and we kind of started that way. Mm. Um, but we've done it other times as well. Again, we don't travel with children. I don't normally just bring like random things, right? Uh, say at Halloween, you know, spider rings or erasers or stickers. And we always just try to give stuff out to kids, you know, who are either like right on the brink of a meltdown or, you know, you seeing the, see the opposite, maybe, maybe some children who are super, super, you know, polite to a cast member or something. Okay. And they always say thank you, but we always laugh because the parents are always the ones that are like, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> Cause it just kind of like stops the process sometimes, which is good. 
this is very interesting to me because for the G3, I bought a ton of little kids things. And we had a few kids, but not as much. I didn't give away all the stuff I had. And I was thinking about giving these out to, you know, complete strangers, but I didn't know if, I didn't know how I would be received if they would think I was kind of creepy. So I kind of shied away from it. So should I not worry and no, definitely down. not worry. It's it's funny, just like we were talking about before. You could spot a geek. You could spot them. Uh, okay. You you know people. You know people that do not want to participate in anything you have to say, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I was just thinking of that because sometimes you'll strike up a conversation with someone in line, and if they then if then I might I might feel a little more comfortable to say, hey, I you know I just carry these around with me to give to kids, and here you go. I think I'm going to do that. We're going in June for the anniversary exactly. trip, so. I've got this huge bag. I went to the dollar <laughs> store and they had all kinds of little character. That's where it figurines. started. Yes. Yeah. Especially for Halloween, because we always went to the Halloween party. We got to go a lot when we were children, but my mom was not someone who allowed us to like get a thousand balloons and a million souvenirs. So that was her. She used to bring uh, the glow necklaces and stuff like that. So that's yeah. kind of where I got the idea from. And again, like it, the kids, and even the parents or other adults are like, this is great because, you know, it eliminates that stuff. It eliminates someone just eliminating the fight between the parent and the child, whatever <laughs> it might be. But yeah, that's where it started. The dollar store. Dollar Tree carries like crazy, you know, glow wa- glow princess wands and like um, different like masks for Halloween. So that's definitely where it started for us was when we would go to Halloween every year. Fantastic. Oh, I love it. Random acts of kindness. What's your last one? The third one. So again, it goes back to planning, but one thing I'm very, very proud of is uh, for my bachelorette party, all of the ladies, whether they were my friends, my cousins, my mother, um, all of her girlfriends, my aunts said we were going to Disney for my bachelorette, whether I wanted to or not. And sure enough, I got 23 of us there. We had a wonderful time. We did dining reservations every single day. And I kept saying the only rules were you had to have fun and you had to go to dinner. Other than that, I didn't care. (laughs) They just kept laughing. And that's kind of how my husband and I, even when we go, it's always like, okay, what time do we want to leave for the bus, for the Skyline or whatever it might be? And it was three o'clock. And I would say to them, listen, there's 23 of us that got to get ready, right? So if that means you take four hours to get in the shower, then you better get get a head start or, you know, whatever it was. And sure enough, I don't know how we managed it. I remember saying to my mom um, in Magic Kingdom, like, is everyone talking behind my back? And she's like, no, everyone is just having a most wonderful time. <laughs> and we really did. You know, even just doing dining reservations, it was hysterical. The amount of, you know, manipulation of, you know, the Disney, you know, Disney dining system and how I managed to get all that was was almost comical. But we well, did it. Wow. I could connect you up with our ADR specialists besides the travel and tiaras. Samantha yeah. and Rebecca, who did our G3 dining reservations yes. for for like 80 f- people <laughs> sometimes. God bless. <laughs> I have a, a friend that are going around Christmas, and there's 25 of them. And I said, listen, the uh, only place that actually does dining for that many people is Beer Garden. That's it. <laughs> I said, yeah. so other than that, we have to make lots of accounts, and we got to book lots of small reservations. So. True. It's, it's quite a <laughs> quite an endeavor to pull off. Fantastic. All right. Now, oh, I like this. You, you emailed me your your notes. You, you questioned my, some of my questions, and you said foodies. How much? I think that you're saying that you're a foodie, so how much should yes. we go into food? Yes, uh, that's what my question was, um, for hey. sure. I, I felt like every question I could have just went in about food, and that's why I wasn't sure. <laughs> well, you're on the right podcast, because we like to yes. go deep in that topic, so feel free. And to- I can Again, like I said, my first fun fact about myself, I think it's the main reason I go at least. Yeah. You know, I always say Disney has the best customer service. Yeah. If you look for it and you participate in it, for sure. Uh, that's a great way to say it. I 100%. Yes. I ran a restaurant for a long time, and I always say, as a customer, you have to participate in customer service as well. I love that because not to pick on my own era, area like yours and mine. You're from Pennsylvania? or. Maybe New Jersey, what, but from Philadelphia Jer- originally. Yep. All right. Well, New Jersey, same thing. We're in the tri-state area. We've got some people that are not. I've met, I've met some of them down at Disney World giving cast members a hard time. And they were always from my area. I'm embarrassed to say. 
Yeah, and you always just think like I don't, but we don't belong to each other. <laughs> Correct. I don't know them. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I love that saying participate in the fun, right? Yeah, that's what it is. I mean, it's, it's, it, you can find terrible everywhere and you can find good everywhere. Like they say, you have to look for it. Right. Um, I think the same thing with customer service, you know, I'm always super nice to say servers and bartenders and I talk to them and ask them questions. They respond to that. Yeah, for sure. You know, love it. All right. Now who went on this trip? So this trip was for my sister-in-law's 40th birthday party. Um, It is the third out of the fourth of us for the 40th birthday. So it was myself, my husband, Joe, um, his sister for her birthday, Janice, and then her husband, Brian. All right. The four of us have gone on a few trips together. Fantastic. I love the couples. We do the same thing with Judy and Ken. Yeah. You can get a lot done, right? Yes, especially because even separate, we've gone on a lot of trips and then we've gone on a few together. So we kind of know what each other likes. I even do reservations separated sometimes. So yeah, I'm in charge of the planning regardless. So yes. (laughs) So I always say you got to have some must do's or a goal, kind of a little plan, even us that go often. A lot. Yes. Yeah. Something that you're really looking forward to, because like we were saying, there's something new happening all the time. All the time. Like we're, yep. we just learned that the Guardians of the Galaxy is going to be open when I get there for first week of June. Yeah, they're saying it's a Memorial Day weekend. I feel like they always love to throw it in when it's going to be super busy on a holiday weekend. It's one of those things. <laughs> um, so that'll be exciting. I know we were even saying for, uh, you know, for when we go in November that uh, hopefully Tron 2 will also be open. I'm like... Is you know, it, oh, crossing wow. our fingers. That, right, <laughs> they are promising Tron for this year, right? For the end of the year. Yeah. That's what they were saying for both. And everything just kind of was unfortunately being pushed back. So, you know, we're just, we're hopeful that, that for November that we'll get to go on both. That'd be fantastic. Wow. So yeah. did you guys talk about what was kind of something you wanted to achieve on this trip? So, yeah. So one of our big goals, every time we go, whether again, it's just my husband and myself or all four of us is we do like to attempt something new every trip. We've done horse carriage rides in the past, uh, the Louie when it was still available, a Polynesian. We always just try to throw at least one thing that's different in there for us. Um, this trip, it was my sister-in-law's 40th. So her requests were to make sure we did maximum hours in the park which was fine. It wasn't super hot. So that worked out. Okay. Uh, She wanted to go to chef Mickey's and that we were there for new year's Eve. We had never done that before. Um, Mm. We didn't go to the park intentionally, uh, but we did get to see the new year's Eve fireworks and it was amazing. Yeah. I was going to say, when did you go? So now we know how many nights did you stay? Um, I want to say it was five. So we stayed from the 30th until the fifth. All right. Beginning of the year. Yep. Yeah. New year's Eve. I've been there once myself. I did Epcot. Yeah. That was really fantastic. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, you hear those horror stories of if you're not there at nine o'clock in the morning, it becomes, you know, slightly disastrous. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's crowded. <laughs> right. You deal with it. You- yes, exactly. And we weren't flying in until almost one o'clock in the afternoon. So we had just made the conscious decision that we were going to do like fancy adult dinner for New Year's Eve and kind of handle it that way. And it really yeah. was, it was great. All right. All right. Let's get into, before we get into the foodie section. <laughs> Let's just find out where you stayed for five nights. So this was another new for us. Um, we say to Art of Animation, a lot mm-hmm. of times we just get, we often say a pop century, which we absolutely love. Mm-hmm. We often say a pop century. We love it there. We say 50s, obsessed. I love Skyliner, love the affordability. Mm-hmm. So we decided to go with Art of Animation. We seen the Little Mermaid rooms years ago. Mm-hmm. They were decent, but I actually like pop century more. So we went with a car suite so all four of us could stay together. It was great. Um, you know, totally manageable for four adults to stay in that room. Uh, had a bedroom, plus a Murphy and a pull-out couch, which were comfortable. Two full bathrooms. One had a tub, one had a walk-in shower. It was, like I said, it was great. You know, even to have breakfast, where people that normally will have breakfast at the hotel, we would run, go grab it, come back. You know, the Murphy bed was the table and plenty of room. So it was a separate bedroom and like a living room? Yes. So when you come in the door, it's like a living room dining area. That's where the pull down Murphy and the pull out couch are. Yeah. There's even like a small kitchenette. It has the normal, you know, hotel room size refrigerator, but it actually has a sink out there, like a wet bar and it has countertop, you know, much more than a regular efficiency room. Right. And then there's a bathroom out there and then the separated bedroom with a door with a, with a bathroom as well. 
Fantastic. We don't hear about that yeah. one that often. That's a good. Yeah, it was great. And we stayed in, in the car section, which we really liked. It mimicked in the layout of the hotel property, similar to the 50s at Pop, which is where we normally stay. Yeah. It gives you just enough distance from the main, you know, the main section, you know, the preferred rooms that you kind of pay the lesser price, but you're still close enough that you're not, you don't feel like, you know, you're doing that schlep, you mm-hmm. know, to try to just get coffee or just go grab breakfast or something very quick. <laughs> now I got, I got to mm-hmm. laugh because <laughs> in my notes for the resort, I put down quick service. Now that actually means. Uh, the- I realized that after the fact. <laughs> We're good. Go ahead. <laughs> I was reading your answer, and for the quick service, you wrote down flight quick land- service there. Yeah, yes, flight landed in Orlando from Philly. Around you, you gave me the whole logistics of how you got that. I guess that was the quick, quick service into the resort. But yes, that was meant to talk about the food at the resort. I realized that. You know, it's so funny. I was talking about transportation with somebody and I <laughs> was th- just, it was on my mind. Uh, no, but the quick service for the hotel was great. We've stayed there before. We had, I think we maybe had lunch one day there. We did breakfast almost every day except for one. We love the, um, the ordering from the app. You know, by yeah. the time I order... I leave the room. I click that I'm here. By the time I grab my coffee, it's ready. And I mean, yeah. they'll, they put it in a bag for you so you can carry it back without a tray. Yeah. It's great. You know, I can imagine if you had kids, it would be even, even more wonderful. I know this, you've been going for a while and we were just saying this recently. They, they make some mistakes when they kick off some of these services, but the mobile yes. ordering in the parks and in the, you know, they've expanded it probably out to everything now. I don't know what doesn't have it. I mean, even and snacks. they expanded the features too. I remember when they first rolled out the mobile ordering, it was difficult to use because if you didn't want something as part of whatever it was, or you wanted to make a modification, you couldn't do that. Uh-huh. And it became a hassle. So you really didn't use, you know, utilize it like you probably could have now. It's, you know, you want extra lettuce, there's a checkbox for it yeah. or whatever it might be. And it's, it's great. They really have done a great job with it. And like you said, it's basically everywhere. We use it. And I think more so because of COVID, they don't want you kind of standing in line, but everywhere, you know, breakfast and lunch in the parks, you know, whatever it was, it was great. You know, we did breakfast with it one day in Magic Kingdom and we ordered when we were coming in and it was ready when we got back back to the the place. Yeah. Super fantastic. Yeah. Order early. Well, if you're like me, Dana, you're thinking of lunch right after breakfast. For sure. (laughs) It's a, what are, I like to look at menus ahead of time. Is that next, what you're saying? <laughs> next question is like, yeah, as soon as we're walking out, where are we going next? Yes, right, exactly. Where, where's our next stop for a meal? Okay. Yeah. And then how about the transportation at Disney World, especially for your resort? So airport was great. It was funny. We kind of fell in this weird loophole for yeah. Magical Express. Black it was, ac- yeah, we had access to it when we were going, but when we were going to come home, we were going to have to do mirrors. It actually was a major hassle because mm. neither one of them, when I went to book it was like, oh no, you have to do both. And I'm like, but neither of you offer the opposite side. What do you mean? Like, And literally the day before we went, it was... And there was a, a blog that got released that said Magical Express to return to the airport is going to be extended. I like I hurry up. We got the refund from Mears. We got a, we got a books. You know, okay. We were thankful because even yeah. Mears seemed concerned that we were only going to be returning. I was like, this is not good. Yeah, you can, you can see this becoming a problem. <laughs> the right. Confusion. Yes. Right. Um, and then transportation during the trip uh, again because of Art of Animation. For any, you know, any geeks out there that don't know, we love the Skyliner. Um, To have access to the Skyliner for um, Epcot, for uh, Hollywood Studios, and even to go to some of the other resorts. We we love Topolino's at um, the Riviera Resort. And to be able to go there so easily without having to get an Uber or a Lyft or trying to, like, get to another park to get to another resort. That Skyliner is great. Yeah, for sure. Again, it had some glitches in the beginning, right? But now (laughs) it's, uh, it's resolved itself. It's just yeah. so quick, even even to see the lines. We've, we've been there before, uh, particularly at Hollywood Studios more than Epcot, and you see this line, and it's just like, oh, no, like, you know, impending doom. 
<laughs> and you're you're on it in five minutes. It's continuous. You don't have that like wait for the next bus type of a feeling. Yeah, Skyliner's great. It's one of the reasons why we always say to pop even with just the two of us, because to have that access to just that extra yeah. version of transportation is wonderful. For sure. <laughs> I think all the groups are gonna go to the all stars and everyone else is gonna go to pop in our animation. Yes. <laughs> because of this. I know. Yeah. Well, it is a little cheaper over at, at the All Stars, I think. Yeah, I, honestly, that's probably where we're staying for the run in November is going to be All-Stars. Okay. I haven't stayed there in years, but they've yeah. redone all the rooms, and it's yeah. great. You know, there's three adults going. I think we're going to try to get one of the suites at music. You know, it'll be it'll be good. Yeah, the main yep. purpose is for the race. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yep. All right. Fantastic. I love hearing about the art of animation and the, the suites. We don't hear about those that often. Great option. And like I said, especially for four adults, you know, normally yeah. it's like people stay there because they have kids and it, which makes sense. But the fact that four adults were that comfortable, we, you know, were shocked. We kept saying, okay, it's only five days. We'll be fine. But it really was great. Or I would have loved to have had that one with my three kids back in my right. day. All yeah. right. Let's, let's find out if you are a foodie. Tell me, <laughs> <laughs> you say you like to have a dinner reserved every day, right? Yeah, we like at least at minimum to do a sit down every single day. It's kind of our goal. Again, we are adults only, yeah. so it does, you know, change it up a little bit. Yeah. But it is a goal. It gives you that air conditioned time. It gives you that time to be able to take a break, you know, decompress. A lot of times dinner, quote unquote, for us, that was four o'clock. It's not as if we're waiting, you know, yeah. sometimes we do nine o'clock on purpose for different reasons, which we can get into. We like to at least do one. It just kind of breaks up the day from having to, again, yep. just with the constant running around. I like doing the early ones. Mom and Judy were booking our ADRs this morning. It was our ADR day today. Oh, very exciting day. <laughs> <laughs> Nerve wracking too, to some degree. Yes. Say. You know, they couldn't get space 220. Uh, yeah. Again, uh, being the planner, uh, we have friends who have been AP holders, have DVC for years. Same thing. I've been stalking. I have reminders set, you know, yeah. trying to find reservations. Her daughter wants to go so bad. I said, I see people having a lot of luck with the um, walk-ups in the oh, app, okay. All right. especially for the lounge area, yeah. which is a suggestion. We haven't had to use it yet. Um, I do know on this trip, we were laughing because we just, I just kept wanting to see what it was about. And they had California girls night of, which is hard to find. And, but when you went into the actual reservation finder, it would say nothing, but yet there was walk-ups available. I guess they hold them separately. You don't know, mm. when it gets close to the time. So just yeah. know that if you can't find one between now and then, it might be a, a loophole. <laughs> one of the issues is that we're doing a split stay. And oh, so that means you got to wait. We've done that before. So now you only got to do the first portion and now you can't do. Correct. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that's part of it. All right. Tell me what was some of your favorite dinner reservations. So like we were talking about in the beginning, we did go for New Year's Eve, which was definitely something different for us. And we got to try a completely different and new signature restaurant. We went to Citrico's at Grand Floridian. Nice. Um, again, signature restaurant. It's been recently redone during the closure for COVID. They completely redid the entire restaurant. It was beautiful. I've mm. seen previous pictures, you know, Grand Floridian can be a little outdated sometimes, you know, one of the older hotels and they really did a beautiful job. Lots of Mary Poppins accents, which I love. Um, I love Mary Poppins. So I was very excited to see uh, the umbrella stand as lamps and, you know, things like that accents. Um, I had an open kitchen, just like they do at grand or I'm sorry, just like they do at the California girl, oh, which was a really cool experience. Yeah, I like that. One of the sections of it even was them baking the bread and doing all that, which I thought oh. was really cool. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Whole dessert section. You really got to see the whole nine yards. It was, it was very, very, very cool. And again, to be there for New Year's Eve, right? You know, yeah. we dressed, we truly dressed up. We were in the spirit of the holiday, uh, the whole nine yards. Okay. Impeccable service, of course. The food was phenomenal, as expected. Okay. What'd you have? So I did, I'm, I am an adventurous eater. I try to at least get something different and get all of the above. If we can, I often have to force the other three out of their box. <laughs> I did the guava short ribs. Uh, my husband had, I believe the tile fish. My sister-in-law had the chicken roulade. And then my brother-in-law had, I think it was the filet or 
one of the steaks on the menu. Okay. Um, we also had the duck appetizer, which was, you know, none of, I've had duck before. The three of them had never had duck. They were all shocked. They were like, oh my God, this was so good. I just said, when things are cooked correctly and they yes. you know, are given care, it's amazing yeah. what anything will taste like. <laughs> I know that's a foreign one to me too. Yes. That I would probably be apprehensive of, but. And it was one of the best things I've ever eaten, let alone great. at Disney. Great. Yeah. Wow. Great to know. Yes. Yeah. Just so good. And so much food. And, you know, we, again, we ate and we drank and <laughs> tried different cocktails and, and everything like that. It was really, really nice. Uh, made Mary. Yes, well, <laughs> exactly. We partaked in the holiday and we weren't driving. So, uh, so, <laughs> so we booked Narcusi, which also is in the Grand Floridian. Have you ever gone there? No. So it's funny. We always struggle to give up California girl. It is our favorite of all. Okay. Um, uh, it was not available for new year's Eve yeah, um, sure. because they do like a private party there. That <laughs> was hysterical $300 a person, which I'm sure was worth it, but not something we were going to partake in. <laughs> uh-huh. And my sister-in-law is allergic to shellfish. So we never get to Narcosis on a trip where she's with us, Okay, um, but it is on the list. I think next spring, we already know we're going in March for a long trip. My husband's in the Philadelphia Mummers and they're going and they're going to get to perform on main street. So we think we're going to try to make it into a, like a, a longer trip. And it's uh-huh. one of my, my bucket lists for that trip is for sure. Oh, you've not done Narcosis either? No, All no right. on the list. You'll hear about it. Yep. If I end up going, just because just we booked it doesn't mean we'll be <laughs> going. Well, that's the truth, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm intrigued by both of these, and I'm excited. I could yeah. do. I definitely want to do both of these at some point. So, all right. Give me another one. Um, we did Topolino's Breakfast. It was another new for us. Um, we've eaten dinner there, which was also um, excellent, but breakfast was really, really exceptional. We did, we've done, again, California Girl Brunch when that was available. It was very, very similar to that, um, wow. both in experience and in, you know, quality of food and, uh, uh, you know, in atmosphere, um, with the exception of it was character dining, which is shocking. You know, there was kids there, the characters came out, they did all the singing and the dancing, but you still felt like you were at a signature restaurant. It wasn't taken away from the fact that, you know, we were four adults and they gave us service as a signature restaurant, even though you were still partaking in all the characters and stuff like that. It was great. Mm. Um, and again, the food was, was great. And just like how the brunch used to be a California grill, you paid per person and they really encourage you just to order one entree, but they do say to you, is there anything else you want to try? So we said, yeah, we want waffles. You know, they looked, we've, I've read a million things about the waffles. They say they're great. They brought us out waffles, like no questions asked. Uh. They're only like 30 cents a piece, so. Well, right. But still, I mean, you know, if you went to another restaurant, they're not just going to give no, you free extra entrees, right? And you pay for it. I get it. But when food's that good, I always say it's totally okay. I had a steak there. Uh, same thing. My sister-in-law was ready to order two scrambled eggs. I was going to, you know, <laughs> grab her by the shoulders and shake her. I was like, just order the quiche. If you don't like it, they'll bring you out something else. And sure enough, I like turned around and she had the whole entire plate cleaned off. I was like. <laughs> You know, told you. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, you put this in bold letters: best meal ever. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's pretty strong statement for a breakfast. It was the best. Topolino's dinner. We said the same thing. My husband had the fillet, and the steak that I had at breakfast was the best steak I've ever had on property. Wow. Oh yeah, yeah. steak at breakfast. Yes. So I had okay. steak and eggs. I think it came with polenta, which texturally I just do not do. Okay. Um, and again, they gave me whatever I wanted. I got eggs with it. I got breakfast potatoes plus the sides. Like I made my own concoction and it was delicious. It's like a big steak, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not terrible. It was like, okay. a, I think what they consider a skirt steak or something. I mean, it really, it was the best steak I've ever had on property. Wow. And I get them often. Trattorial Fauna, Fauna had uh, steak and eggs yeah. too. We saw yep, people. which I used to love. Ah, yeah, that's a good breakfast. By too. far out, yeah, by far outweighed it. Just saying, and <laughs> I've gotten that every single time I've gone there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, I got uh, this is one I was mentioning to my wife. I would like to go this trip, but I don't think I'm going to win. <laughs> Via Napoli. It's our third newbie for the trip. Honestly, I could understand based off of the area that we're in why we avoid going to pizza places while we're on vacation right yep you're in a good pizza place it better be a good pizza place and it was you know i've had other friends again from the philadelphia area who said that it was good uh neapolitan style pizza 
and sure enough, it was delicious. Uh, we weren't there, unfortunately, during a festival. It's one of the few times that we've gone, there was no festival happening. So we knew we were going to be hungry. We knew we'd be celebrating a birthday and we'd be drinking around the world. So it was kind of like a great late, you know, we did an 730 dining reservation, um, got one of the monstrosity pizzas, one regular, and we did like, there's like a family style type salad that, that you can order. And it was perfect. Yeah. Thin crust. Yep. Yeah. Super crunchy, super delicious. The toppings. I always say I I'm Italian from South Philly. I don't order red sauce anywhere <laughs> ah. <laughs> and it was great. It was delicious. So, you know, you can't ask for much more than that. Well, there's a great endorsement. I'm so glad. Exactly. I know there are so many pizza snobs. I always worry when they go to (laughs) Viennapoli. Yes. They're going to be disappointed. But how was the service there? Because that's one of the ones, funny enough, seems like all the time when I go there, there's not that it's bad service. There's always something goes wrong. It's like something weird happens when I'm at. It just wasn't like. I felt like I was at home. Let's do like, not at my house, but like I was at a pizza parlor. It wasn't anything crazy. The girl was very nice. It wasn't her. She had an entire room of tables because that's the type of service that it was. You know, do you guys know what you want type of a situation, which was fine. We did, you know, who got wine, who got a beer. We ordered the pizzas. Everything kind of came out and we were in and out fairly quickly. And the food was delicious. I mean, I think you're right. I didn't need service service at that place. That's I guess. Yeah. (laughs) It is kind of a busy, crazy place with a lot of people packed in there. Right. That that makes sense. That's probably why we've had a lot of confusion in our service. Of course, we had the the international students back in the day. I think I heard they're coming back too. Yes, which I'm so excited for because that means hopefully Pick a Pearl will be back in Japan Uh, very, very soon. (laughs) You well, you are a geek. (laughs) It's uh that's a deep cut. Yeah, that one. And uh, the fact that they, you know, half the reason we went to Via Napoli, if not more than half the reason we went there is because Rose and Crown is one of our all-time favorites, especially uh-huh. during, you know, Harmonious and all the different fire, you know, firework shows. And they cut the menu so much because of staffing changes uh-huh. that I just can't justify going there. I'm like, the things I love the most are not on the menu right now. Uh-huh. So I'm just like okay. hoping the oh. you know international employees coming back means that maybe they'll men- that, that menu will expand again. <laughs> oh, great! <laughs> great thought. Well, we're going yeah. back. We'll, we'll we'll let you know what we think. We're going. I'm not worried about the menu. It's such a fun the dessert party. Well, it's a meal and dessert party and the fireworks. Package. Yes, that's we're the going, thing now, and you yeah. get to go out on the the patio and stay. Yes. Yeah, you got to do that because that is so much fun. I, that was one of the best experiences we ever had at Disney World. We talk about that often, so we're doing that again. Yeah. yeah. Love it. All right. Where else are we going? Um, trying to think. So we, again, speaking of red sauce as a South Philly Italian, it's funny. We go to Tony's almost every trip. I won't, won't get red sauce. Uh, my husband gets the chicken parm. It's always great. Thin, you know, tastes good. It's good to know. I'm always a big fan of like their other pasta dishes. You know, for a long time, they had like a gnocchi with charred vegetables and grilled shrimp. It was delicious. It's a great, easy place we go in Magic Kingdom. Again, not this trip, but normally we go there for 345 reservation before the Halloween party starts. Huh? So by the time we're done dinner, everybody else is getting forced out of the park, and we've already eaten dinner and not have to worry about it. Yes. But we still go there every trip. We don't have a bad meal. And it's funny when I see p- people say, like, terrible things about it, and I'm just like, yep, please don't take my reservations from me. <laughs> you know, we've gotten – Lots of great reviews from Tony's, and I think it's one that was ignored. Yeah, most of the time. So, yeah, we've got nothing but great reviews, especially in the last couple of years. I wouldn't order red sauce from there. I wouldn't order red sauce from places mm-hmm. around here necessarily. <laughs> but yeah, like I just avoid that, and I always have a great meal there. Always fantastic. Um, same thing goes for Fifties Prime Time in Hollywood Studios. We always have a blast. We had a great server who totally played along with the craziness of our table. We always have a good meal there. So it's always good. (laughs) You're a picky eater, so you can't get too adventurous. Literally. So like, you know, I always say these are the places we go. Would I love to go to, um, you know, Skipper's Canteen in Magic Kingdom? I sure would. Maybe if I can somehow run away from the rest of the people that I'm on a vacation with. (laughs) Well, you stick around with us. You know, we do this thing called the Grand Geek and Gathering. I can introduce you to some people. Perfect. (laughs) 
I, I have convinced my husband that there are options for him at Brown Derby, so we will be going there next time we get to Hollywood Studios. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say Brown Derby is very adventurous. They got it's, some yeah, basic... it's just not his cup of tea. That's all necessarily oh, okay. either. So, but it'll be fine. <laughs> what does he like? I mean, they do got they got a fillet. Thing. They got yeah, they're very yes. famous for a burger there too. So, which is I think how I sold him on it. Correct. <laughs> all right, I see you had a clunker. One, yes. I, I'll be honest. We did breakfast there years ago. So Chef Mickey's. Again, I don't mind the character dining. I don't mind the kids are there to enjoy themselves as much as I am. And it had nothing to do with that. The meal itself was not great. The server was wonderful. I had an adult beverage, which was wonderful. I, I honestly can't say i think there might have been a mac and cheese or something that was served that was good and that was where it ended really what, it what was, was still what? family style fortunately the meats yeah. and stuff it just wasn't good okay and the worst part of it is we got the bill and it was only 18 dollars cheaper than our meal from citricos the night before <laughs> and it just wasn't enough to like you know uh, yeah. a hard stabber right there not your place yeah. yes you know we, we, we joked i said we managed to each have you know two to three adult beverages and gourmet you know five-star dining the night before and only paid 18 dollars more is live and learn yes i i made them promise to not make me go back there <laughs> <laughs> But and it was my sister's, my sister-in-law's request. You know, that was her thing. It was New Year's Eve. It was spend most hours in the park and Chef Mickey. So I wasn't taking her, you know, taking it from her. So I, I, you know, I did it. And I just, like I said, I made them promise that we wouldn't ever make me do that again. One for the team. They went because they wanted um, soft serve ice cream. And mm-hmm. I kept saying, I'm like, but it's family style right now. That's not available. No, no, it'll be available. So I just went with it. and It wasn't there, right? I don't like to say I'm right, but you know, sometimes you have to just tell people, you know, I was right about this, right? <laughs> uh, you'd have to get soft serve somewhere else. Yep, the exactly. Kingdom. Yes. <laughs> All right. Lounges. I, yeah. I, I tell you, this was a takeaway that I've had from my last trips. They are just some fantastic lounges, not just the drinks to ha- have fun and some got themes and the food yep. is fantastic too. So yeah. Which, did you find some good ones? Yeah, a couple different ones in trips past. Um, this time, because, again, New Year's Eve, we were at Grand Florida already. We um, made it up to Enchanted Rose. It was great. Yeah. You know, beautifully decorated. The server was wonderful. Um, bartenders, you know, it was like a show. Uh, truly, you know, performance the way that they made drinks and <laughs> um, how fancy some of the drinks were. And, you know, we each tried something different. Uh, really, really, really cool. Really great experience. And again, it was um, Beauty and the Beast themed, but just like Citra goes, it was just touches here and there and not like in your face character, but enough that it makes it like whimsical and beautiful and, you know, just enjoyable to be there. Were you in the main section there? Because I know they kind of expanded out. There's a bunch of Yes, we were right by the bar, one of the little tables. Gotcha. Yep. Good spot. All right. Yeah, we've done a couple different um, lounges when the wave was still open. Um, We did there. We've done um, Trader Trader Sam's at Polynesia. And this was, you know, just as great. Morocco, where was, oh, Morocco. Oh, you did Epcot. Moroccan Mule and yes. Epcot. So it was my favorite drink of the entire trip um, was the Moroccan Mule and Epcot. So it's a fig Moscow Mule. I did research on it. I knew I wanted it. It was on my short list again of, of my drinks and food that I wanted to try this trip. And it's funny because it, I thought it was at a bar. I knew it was at a bar and I knew it wasn't at like the little quick service bar that has the desserts and stuff in yeah. Morocco section. Yeah. So uh, with my app, I'm like, where is this? I went up to the hostess desk for the main, you know, Spice Roads restaurant. And sure enough, it's that bar. It's the bar that's behind the hostess desk is that's who serves it. Oh, so it's that Spice Road table then. Yes, but okay. it's just at the bar. It's not even technically on the restaurant's menu. It was weird. They said they serve it there, obviously, but it's not technically on that menu either. Uh, okay. And it was so good that I came home and bought a bottle of the fig vodka. <laughs> <laughs> fig vodka. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. Yep. Really good. Fantastic. That's great find. Y'all, yes. you heard, I don't know if you heard my show, my trip report, but Spice Road Table, I have conquered. I saw. I saw that was part of when you guys did the big, the big, uh, nice. I got proof, Dana. Here's my I glass. Got proof. That's it. My husband's a biggie. Whenever there's a souvenir glass, he makes sure he upgrades and gets it. We have a collection behind the bar. <laughs> this was even 
more fun because they don't sell them, but the server let me take it home. I was going to say, that's why your wife has to just bring, bring, bring uh, big purses with her. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing about that one is the ladies that the whole group, there's a G3 group. We got back to the hotel. We were, I was only there one night and we're leaving and I almost forgot to pack it. It was in the kitchen. And so Wendy Fox took it home and I just got it this past weekend when we were in New York City. So it made Too a long funny. trip here. Yeah. Went roundabout way. That's all right as long as you got it. Exactly. I'm so excited. It's a trophy now. Yeah. All right. Drinks at the hotel bar. Yeah. So... Um, again, we like to do pool time when we can. We didn't do as much this time. It just wasn't that warm. The hours at the park were kind of short, but every time we would go back and forth uh, to the main building or something, we did, you know, grab a drink. There's a couple different, uh, drinks out right now that are kind of across all of the parks and hotels. Um, I tried for like the 50th anniversary that were good. Um, but what we loved there was they do this, uh, the spiked Dole whips. So that was like a basically like dessert it was great <laughs> That's good. yeah i know I, I yeah i've heard people really like these so first time trying that yeah nice good to know and you know this made me want to think because it looks like we went through all your food i know Te- i was thinking the same thing yeah the technical yeah. but all right i'm gonna, I'm gonna get, you, get you on the spot top three treats at disney world so they don't have my favorite all-time favorite right now and i'm hoping it'll come back I was given some crazy excuse in January, but it is the dark chocolate or milk chocolate. I would suffice uh, dipped pineapple on a stick. Ooh, where would you get that? So they sometimes have them at Main Tree Confectionery, but they always would have them at Goofy's Treats back like in the circus section by Dumbo back there. Oh, okay. I was told by both because I wanted to see if they would give me the same crazy story that apparently (laughs) they just don't have the vendor right now for fruit. So, like, that's why there was no chocolate covered strawberries and there was no pineapple. They only could get apples. And I was uh, like, okay. Uh, and I was like, that just sounds crazy. So then I went to the Main Street Confectionery and they gave me the same reason. So I was like, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, there are some shortages <laughs> yeah. right now. All right. That's a good one. No, that. Yep. You don't. That, I like hearing the different ones too. But you don't, we don't, people don't talk about that one much. All right. Give me a n- number two. Uh, one of the big ones we get when we at least say pop country is the cheesecake tie-dye cheesecake it's literally just a cheesecake cup but it's like the perfect like amount and not like i don't love crust so like for me it's like the perfect little treat in a cup i love cheesecake yep that's that pop it's yep nice it looks funky because it's tie-dye but it just tastes like good like philadelphia cream cheese cheesecake (laughs) yeah Uh wow two great ones give me another one and of course, the famous Mickey bar. The I'm Mickey a huge, bar. huge ice cream fan. So honestly, ice cream anywhere. I love yeah. Plaza ice cream on Main Street. I'm excited. Hopefully, they have a good flavor of like the Seven Dwarves. Uh, I want to say that it's at Friars Nook, maybe. They were doing these different Seven Dwarves. Uh, they had a cranberry one when we were there in January that was uh, really good. Mm. I'm an ice cream fanatic. I don't uh, need anything fancy. I just love ice cream. So. I just started my diet like a week, a week ahead. Sorry. This, yeah, this is hard. I've been, I'm only like 10 days into this. So yeah, this is rough. But yeah. Have you been? To, what do you think of Beaches and Cream? It's one we haven't been to. Oh. Yeah, you know what? Why don't so, you try that one? So the reason why it's going to be a definite for the next trip if we're doing Brown Derby is because we always kind of say, well, if we're going to have – 50s prime time like do we really need to eat the similar food and go to beaches and cream you know it's just kind of that but if i'm getting us to round derby and not going to do 50s prime time next trip then that means do you like it opens the window do you like <laughs> on your ice cream sunday do you like chocolate and peanut butter yeah i want the jose, jose. no way jose uh-huh. <laughs> and i'll be getting full sized and i can skip all food it's fine <laughs> i didn't know there was different sizes i thought there was yes. only one i think you can get a small version of it Humongous. somebody said but <laughs> yeah, I just need the big one, and I can skip all of the food there. Oh, I want you to do that, especially if you're a Skyliner resort. There's yes. Piece, you have no excuse. Yep. Nice. Yep, yep. All right. This is fun. I'm having fun with you. <laughs> See. Well, no, no wonder you're a friend of Rob's. <gasps> <laughs> All right, so did you do, let's see, I don't know, maybe we already covered everything, but anything for the first well, So there was something, um, I know the question that we did skip for the first time was, as part of the New Year's that we didn't cover yet, so part of our New Year's Eve adventures, you know, like I said, we did Citricos, we did Enchanted Rose, but we did make it a goal that we were just going to be 
see the fireworks from the beach, the something of somewhere. And we ended up, the server and bartender at Enchanted Rose basically pointed us in the right direction. We ended up in the big pavilion out at the Grand Floridian. They said, if you get there, you know, a little bit early, it was like 1115. It wasn't super crazy early. We were able to get right at the point of the pier and it was, it was great. I mean, we have video of it. You can see the numbers in the sky explode. It was really cool. It was everything that you thought it would be. And even from that aspect, not even being on main street, it was still great. Um, Music gets piped in, you know, just like some of the restaurants and stuff. It was great. And no anxiety or crowded. Exactly. And I can't say enough. We ended up with an Uber driver that somehow, and I think it's because he said to us that he was staying on Disney property on purpose. So surprisingly for New Year's Eve, it was very seamless and quick. I mean, fireworks were over. We had our Uber in 15 minutes to the point where we saved his number. He took us back to the airport at the end of the trip. And I've now sent three families that have used him for airport transportation. Uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know you could do that. To be honest with yeah. you. I'm, I'm kind of a new Uber. I don't use it only when yeah. I'm, I've only used it a couple of times now. It was a suggestion that was given to me like when, you know, I guess maybe a few years ago before COVID. Yeah. But if you really love, you know, the, the Uber, I remember an Uber driver saying that to us, like, you know, if, if you want me to, I could pick you up after dinner as well. You know, if you want my card and we were like, yeah, you know, I felt you feel safe with somebody, their car is clean. It's kind that's of the general. You yeah. Don't, you don't hear, that's the first time I've you heard don't this. think of it. Yep. And sure enough, we asked the gentleman, we, he took us back, you know, took us to Citric Coast Grand Floridian, took us back after midnight and we asked him for a card and used him several times since then. So how do you do it? Is it in the app you can call his number? No, oh. no. He just gave us our card. I saved his number in my phone. So, you... so now it just goes directly to him. I don't even. Yep. So you make a phone call to him? Or no, that... I just text him on his cell phone. <laughs> oh, okay. But how do you connect like, it with the Uber? The app? You don't. You don't. No. Oh, you just pay them like, uh... uh, no, I shouldn't say that. So for airport, <laughs> we did it. Um, because he said that it's not considered, you know, for his Uber, it was more just like a concierge type service. Okay. Um, but like when he picked us up for like the end of the night that went okay. to Uber, I'm not sure exactly yeah. how, I mean, I, I just, he had it, it was in, in the phone and he was able okay. to just kind of connect to it, I guess okay. the way that he just picked up the ride. Yeah. Oh, okay. He did it for you. Gotcha. So do you like to do some shopping when you're down there? Yes. Um, we don't do crazy, uh, like a million things. We do have some very, very little nieces. Sometimes they'll get something. My husband loves, we, we like to actually shop in the Cologne and makeup store in France. We kind of like do that kind of stuff. Uh, this trip, we really, we didn't do much. We wanted to buy the cuckoo clock in Germany and here the store was closed. Oh, Again, right. because of the, you know, the international international yeah. uh, employees and stuff like that. They don't have them in stock right now. Exactly. I know my parents stayed. My dad was in the service. He was in Germany and they've always had a fondness for cuckoo clocks. Like I noticed that. Yeah. They have them in their house. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And they're beautiful. Yeah, they I are, mean, that was going to yeah. be our splurge, you know, um, we a lot of times what we always say, we try to steer away from like t-shirts uh, just because if not, you'd end up with even more than we already have. Lord knows. Um, so we just try to always say, instead of spending, you know, getting five t-shirts that equals $200, then we might as well just kind of spend something a little bit bigger. Uh, my husband's gotten, you know, Tommy Bahama beautiful sweaters or, you know, I've purchased, you know, different things like that. Um, that's kind of nice because it's stuff that you could use all the time. How much are the cuckoo clocks you think at that Oh, uh, they're like $1,500. Are they that much? Yes. Oh, they're like yep. handmade, right? Oh yeah. They're, yeah, they're legit. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. It was going to be the splurge. <laughs> uh, that's right. Any other fun stories? I'd see. Well, you, how did your sister do with her birthday? She have a lot of good times going to Disney World yep. for her birthday. Yep. She already. We're already planning the next. She's going to be coming with us next March um, again for the mummer's trip, and it was great. You know, we always, like I said, we participate in positive customer service, so we make it what it what it is, and it's always wonderful. Did you notice any difference in the in the service this trip? I mean, compared to you know, this like you said, the staffing levels are a little a little off right now. They're 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 getting they're getting back there, but getting back. It is funny, and it's not something I would want to complain about because it's extras. There wasn't much. You know, she wore her say her Disney you know her Disney birthday pin every single day. 
no cupcakes, no stuff like that. It's not something I would ever complain about because it's extras. But at the same time, have we gone to almost every other trip for somebody else's birthday? We did. Mm. Um, But I think that's that stuff, right? It's, you know, people are either unfamiliar. A lot of times we were interacting with people at a restaurant who had never worked at that restaurant before, even though they might've been a Disney member, you know, cast member for a long time. So it was those things like, oh, I've never been to, I've never worked at Tony's before. Yeah, right. That's true. I know you're a great planner. Give us some of your hacks and tips for touring the parks. Like I said, I do the same Google sheet. So I plug and play. Uh, I give it to many of my friends. In saying that, I don't over plan. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, like I said previously, the best way to describe how we do it is even my husband will say to me, what time are we leaving today? What are we doing? Normally, we only do one early morning day. We really used to do it when Be Our Guest had early morning breakfast, you know, that pre-park breakfast. Yes, right. It was great. That was a great thing, especially because it was, um, the show was out front. So you really got more of the experience. Um, yeah. But normally, we don't go into the park until later. This trip was a little different uh, because the parks kind of close anywhere between 7 and 9 o'clock did change it a little bit for us and it wasn't that hot. So we didn't really spend as much time at the pool, but that's one of my biggest strategies is we don't, you know, go from morning till night. And I always just think, you know, I have lots of friends who have children that I, you know, I, I send on their way down there. My biggest suggestion always is, is that just stick to your schedule. You know, my niece wakes up at six o'clock in the morning. So then you should do pre-park and then take a normal nap time. And then if they happen to want to stay up until 12 o'clock at night, that's great. Too. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, yeah, we always joke. Our funniest story ever is, uh, this was years ago, but there was a kid hysterically crying, you know, at one o'clock in the afternoon in the blazing heat of animal kingdom all right. and screaming. And the mom was just like, we're having fun. We're all having fun. And an older gentleman looked at me and just was like, yeah, we're all having fun. All right. And I just thought like, this kid needs a nap. That's all he needs. Like literally a little dunk in the pool with a nap. Um, but that's it, you know, plan to the point of, you don't want to be without a dining. If you're somebody that knows you want to sit down for dinner or lunch yeah. or all of the above all day long, do it. You got to plan it though. Right. But then be okay with don't over plan to the point where like, we need to be here at one fifteen and here at one forty five because you're always just going to feel like you're either rushed or you're missing out on something. Yep. It's kind of the feeling I try to avoid is like, Oh, we're going to miss this. We're going to miss out on whatever, you know, if you don't have that constant like anxiety over it, you don't really have that feeling of missing out either. I agree. Yes. It's very similar to what the number one tr- tip we always give have a plan but don't have it too <laughs> too planned yeah exactly that's exactly what it is right yeah don't uh you know i have friends who have gone and they're like i'm not planning it's too much it's too crazy we're not gonna want to know what we're gonna do and then they come home and they're like could you believe we didn't get one dining reservation <laughs> yes i can believe that that's why i said we should make your dining reservations ahead of time <laughs> what do you what do you try to do do you have a routine you do every trip our normal is we like to do Magic Kingdom always twice. Again, we do, we normally stay for fireworks no matter what. That's normally our go-to is we like fire. We love the fireworks shows. I think it's really what makes it extra, extra magical in all the parks. Yeah. What'd you think of the new ones? The two. Oh God. Beautiful. We, so yeah. we ended up seeing New Year's Eve plus Magic Kingdom twice. Oh, um, oh. That, that trip. It really just was, it was so good. Yes. It was funny. It's funny because so many people were sad to see the last show go, but I was sad when the show before that went. So it's just, you know. It's such a controversy. Yes. I know. You know, comes change. And it was, I think they were, they were just as beautiful and the song is wonderful. And yeah. Yeah. I've been hearing people really, the Magic Kingdom fireworks, really disappointed. They really, I didn't realize how much they loved the, the previous show. Which I think was happily ever after, right? Yes. But wishes was my favorite, which was the one before that. <laughs> wishes really that's the right. one I I mean, that was going on for a long time. We all got pretty attached, attached. to wishes. Yeah, exactly to us. Yeah, we were we had an emotional attachment that's to it. Well, I'm surprised a lot of my listeners have talked about happily ever after and getting attached and I don't know, it wasn't around that. Part long. of my I know, and part of my brain sure. keeps thinking when I talk to people about it, I'm like, I feel like they just mushed them together and they don't realize they were separate. <laughs> <laughs> it's my, I, I've come to that conclusion, but I could be wrong. <laughs> one, one big long fireworks. And yeah, so they're yeah. having a hard time for, with the adjustment. Yep. It's really, so what'd you think of Harmonious over at Epcot? 
we didn't get to see it. <gasps> oh, I just thought you said you were dead. No, oh, we didn't see it. No. So I'm just not talking about that, and I will see it in November. Make exactly. It. It's okay. So it's well, okay. It's okay. <laughs> we, we'll just move right along then. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> um, but no, in terms of routine, the, re- the main reason that we love, and again, we're adults only for the most part, um, we do an early morning and a late night. We also, just as much as we like pre-park, we actually love late night more. I always say, if you are people who don't mind eating dinner at nine o'clock at night, you know, force that lunch later, whatever it might be, you know, a day that you do a top of you know, is brunch and then don't eat lunch until four o'clock in the afternoon or whatever. If you can do, like, if the park is closing at 9 o'clock and you can get a BR guest at, or a Liberty Tree Tavern at 8.55 at night, when you leave and it is empty but the castle is still lit up, it's yeah. awesome. And they don't yeah. kick you out. Yes, they encourage you towards the door, but they don't care if you stop a million times and take pictures and everything yeah. else. It's great. Yeah. Yes, I agree. It's pretty cool. Same thing. I was just telling my wife, Margita, today. I said, if you see any dessert parties or after hours at Epcot, I love that world showcase walking out when no one's yep. around. Fantastic. No one's around. Yep. I love those. Yeah, they have all the lights on. It's just, you know, not all the lights so on, but the cool. night lights are on. And it's just a whole different experience. It's great. I totally agree with you there. Is there um, something you got to do every trip? So this is probably, and this might go back to tips, you yeah. know, tips and tricks. But yeah, I can tell you there. what we yeah. Yeah, but uh, we do every single trip is we order groceries. Um, okay. How do you do <laughs> again, it? We, so we used to do Garden Grocer. We've done Instacart. We've done Amazon Prime. There's a new group that we found on Facebook, uh, Ears for Each Other. It was like cast members that have been laid off. We yep. found this young couple that now literally just goes to Publix for you. It's great, especially with a lot of these rooms, You know, even at Pop Century with just a little refrigerator. Again. Yeah we're just adults. So huh. I buy wine, we buy alcohol, we buy, you know, cheese and crackers and snacks. And that way we really do make it a vacation because we lay by the pool and we enjoy ourselves and that adds to it. Right. It just makes it enough that we're not having to run around and trying to find food and do those types of things, you know, get a case of water, those types of things. It just makes it, again, it makes it like an easier vacation. Fantastic. And then the big, like I said before, the biggie for every single trip is we stay for the fireworks. It's the best part. <laughs> what did you think of Rivers of Light over Animal Kingdom? Oh, we we loved that. Okay. The kite is, yeah, the kites is cool during the day. It's just different, much, much different. Uh, but no, Rivers of Light was great. You know, the best spot to watch Rivers of Light is when oh. you, we would do at, uh, Everest at the end of the night. Okay. Oh, yeah. And when there was no line. They would let us stay on, and when you would go up the hill for Everest, yeah. you got to see the whole thing in the water. It was cool. That's cool. That is another great pro tip. There, do the rides when people are doing the yeah. It's definitely shows. one of one of my my biggies. That's on my my list. Yeah. Oh, did you have any character meets? You see, the the characters are going to be hugging again. I know. So we always do. We we still refer to as talking Mickey, even though he no longer talks. <laughs> I think that was the only one we did this trip. I think yeah. it was just not on our radar because we knew that there was like such a barrier between you and characters um, type of a uh, thing. But no, that will be high on our list. Um, we love we love that. What What's some of your favorite rides? Did you do something new? So Flight of Passage, Soarin, they're always our favorites, but Ratatouille, we got to do this trip and it was everything that everyone claims it to be. Funny, funny fact, we were able to do virtual queue and I, I think our trip, I think our day there might've been Tuesday by Sunday is when they stopped the free virtual queue, which was kind of funny. So we were able to do it. It was super, it was, you know, super easy to use and it was great. What'd you get for a queue number? Um, I don't think that it was terrible. I think our original time slot time slot should have been like 11 30, 12. And I think by the time we were there, it was not till four 30. Mm. It just kept like shifting. I don't know whether it was because of crowds or whatever it was, but I don't think it was bad. I think our Q number was, I don't know, maybe below 50, but yeah, by yeah. the time we got on, <laughs> which was fine. Yeah. Did you learn anything new on this trip? One of our big things was, again, my sister-in-law qualifies for the disability pass. Yeah. It was the first time we got to use it using the My Disney Experience app. It was so, so easy. It was great that we got to. My my best friend who goes often and her son also qualifies for it mm-hmm. was going the end of January. So I was able to, like, fill her in on the easiest way to do it. Uh, uh, 
I can't, again, I can't imagine, you know, we always used to say, and it was fine. My sister-in-law actually just can't stand for long periods of time, but she does walk very well. So we didn't necessarily mind that we would have to go to a ride, grab, you know, you just have to scan in yeah. and then report back later. But it kind of made for this like constant back and forth. Yeah. Um, Cause sometimes it would be an hour before you could go back. So you had to find something else to do, whatever it was. But now the fact that you can grab a pass in the app, just like you do for the, you know, the lightning lane through genie plus or whatever oh. it might be. Um, so you're not having to go there to get the pass to then go back later. Um, yeah. It was, it was, it was really easy. Something we didn't know. And it's something that we learned um, was that you could have actually qualified for the DAS pass through like a chat um, ahead of time. And my best friend did do that. I was texting her while we were there. Cause I knew she was going in two weeks. I'm like, you already are allowed to do this. She went on, you know, of course there was an extended wait period even to do that. Um, yes. But she sat in the queue and sure enough, it was done in minutes and she didn't have to then take her son through the line to try to find something, you know, it right. avoided all that. And it was great. Yeah. So you can now get on. Uh, so I didn't realize this chat. I thought you got on a phone call, but you can get ahead of time before you get there. Right. I think it's a video chat. I think that you oh. actually have to, they have to see and the oh, person that right. qualifies. Gotcha. Uh, and I yep. said, um, my sister-in-law is just, she would have been like, well, you do it. And I would have said, no, yeah. we have to do it together the person that qualifies has to be in the video i believe right um I, and i'm sure if it's a very little child obviously they don't make you do that but it, it can't be that like i'm calling and saying hey my mom needs it um, i think that they kind of are, have some requirements for it sure but she said it was you know unfortunately of course just like disney right now with the phone you know everybody's short staffed and stuff like that um i know she had to wait in this virtual queue for it for some time yeah she yeah. did it there that way she didn't have to bother doing it when she got there and i think it was good for 60 days Right. Great to know that they got yeah. it built into the app. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah, I made it great. It wasn't like with uh, lightning. It was like a separate, um, almost like when you hit, I can, I do it for a living so I can visualize it three lines in the corner and it brings up like how you used to be able to get to the store or different features. It just shows up at the bottom. As soon as you qualify for it and they register you for it, it shows up at the bottom and that's where you go to do the selections. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So what are you going to do next time you go on a Disney trip? So it will be the first time I ever run November when we go again, we already have two trips planned. So November when we go, it's going to be the first time I ever do a Disney run. The same best friend I was just referring to is who's who going to say forcing me to run. Um, she has been trying to get me to go with her for several years. I've actually gone on the trip with her when she's run, but I've never actually uh, did the running. So we're doing the 5k together and then she's going to do the full challenge uh, But the three of us will stay together. The plan is to stay at all star music. March's planning has just started. Um, again, that's with the Philadelphia Mummers group that my husband belongs to. He belongs to Fralinger String Band. They go every few years. Really cool experience. I have friends who have already done it with them. You know, they get to parade down Main Street, things like that. And they, you know, do different events together. So I'm excited for that trip as well. So they'll both have their own new features. I know you're a nighttime person. You might not even get to sleep if you're going to run Disney event. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be okay. So our plan, we, that's what I said. I'm like, what's our plan? I'm like, I know it's not going to be our normal. And her and I have done Disney since we were little together. We even did our senior trip, Disney trip together. She's like, well, but on Thursday, we do nothing Thursday, maybe find something for dinner. And then she said that way she doesn't run again until I think Sunday. So she's like, so Friday and Saturday, we really have to, you know, after you're on the 5k, you have all the time. And then that Sunday night we'll Epcot and then Monday we'll come home. <laughs> So it'll be some, one of our shorter trips, but her, myself, and my husband uh, enjoy Disney together. He refers to us as his sister wives when we go away. <laughs> he, yeah. he refuses to miss out on a trip because he loves it so much, and we don't mind. So uh, the three of us have gone several times together. Awesome. Yeah. All right, let's get into the planning tips. What's some of your best advice for a newbie? I always say get the memory maker of photo pass. Mm. Yes, it's more money. Yes, it's, you know, some people feel like Disney is trying to take advantage of us money-wise. It is one of those things, though, especially, again, if you have a family, we use it. I, you know, if you're not somebody that's ever going to take pictures, I guess I could see, you know, obviously there would be no reason to get it. But we make sure we take the pictures. We get mm. the ride photos and we stand on Main Street, you know, daytime and nighttime and find the photographers in all the different parks. And it's great. You know, we have fun. And again, we play into it. And I think it makes it even more enjoyable. You know, do crazy poses. And do you have a magical, um, you know, thing you can add to our picture or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, it's one of my, yeah. big, my big tips. I like, just think it's great. You're right. It's another expense, but... 
it's a value beyond yes. the expense. <laughs> you just gave a bunch of the reasons, and they're always changing it up. There's always new, always right, spe- special shots, magic shots. Yep. I call them magic shots. Thank you. That was the word. Yeah. I couldn't think of it either. Or you get like. Some, I like the art festival. They have those places you can put your head in, you know, yes. somewhere. And there's, just, and there's always different stuff like that, right? It just, yeah. yeah you got to take advantage of it, like I said. But there's been trips where if even right. five or six days, we come up with 300 pictures. Yeah, my ride pictures. Remember back in the day, you had to stop and get, my wife would buy them every time. I'm like, you're buying the picture again? But she had to have that picture. Now it right. just immediately goes on to that. Memory maker. Yeah, with the magic band or um, this yeah. trip, I my first trip I ever had an Apple Watch. I didn't even need a magic band this trip. And it just goes. Oh, There's yeah. no, you know, it wow. knows you're there and it just goes to you. You don't even have to stop and scan. Some of them, uh, Amazing. like Buzz Lightyear still has the, an Everest. Yeah. They still have where you can technically scan, but you don't even need to. And how fast they show up in your app. It's, Unbelievable. Right? That's yep. that's Amazing. You said you're in IT and uh, sometimes we complain about Disney IT. Uh-huh. <laughs> But that is one that work, seems to work out really well. And if you don't see the picture, definitely ask somebody because they'll oh, yeah, I have, find um, it. Like this past trip, we got somebody else a slinky dog and I messaged <laughs> them because I, I, again, saw this on uh, one of the many Facebook groups that I'm on. Um, but it was, you know, if you message them like around about time you think you were there, do you want yeah. if they sent the pictures to us? Yep, for sure. <laughs> All right. Give me some more tips. Uh, pack a portable phone charger. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, yeah, you I just, it's silly, fast. but you yeah. see people, you, especially using the app and all this different stuff. Now you see people like, uh, you know, sitting in on main street in a store on the floor, like plugged into the wall. And I'm just like, Oh yeah. Especially they're not hard to find now anymore either. It's not like years ago where it used to, it used right. to be like a, a commodity. Now That's it's right. pretty easy. I think actually one I didn't put on here, but it's something that I will add to the list is shoes. I am a light packer. My husband is aware that if we are going for three days or less, you only get a book bag because I'm not schlepping for luggage. <laughs> but it is one of the things I make sure we do. You you get like, make sure you wear a pair of sneakers on the plane and bring a pair of sandals and bring a pair of Crocs. And I don't even have bad feet, but you can't wear the same shoes two days in a row. And yeah, it's always a suggestion I make. <laughs> a bunch of the geeks bought Crocs. When they were down at Disney World, are they comfortable? Obsessed, obsessed. Yeah. Are yep. they comfortable? Yes, my husband has um, a very bad back. He's had four back surgeries, uh-huh. and it is all he wears down there now. No kidding. Yes, mm, it's, I'm looking to this. So they're comfy. They have actual arch support. They have the back on them if you want. They're waterproof, so if it rains, you're fine. And if you tend to swell on the heat or anything like that, they're, they're, they're roomy. They're not like narrow on your feet. So you don't get that rubbing. Yeah. I'm a flip flop person. I don't like socks. So yeah. I always just wear flip flops, which I still bring with me, but the Crocs are like a great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got plantar fasciitis, so I do need the uh, support. Yeah. But yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. We rock the Crocs. That's for sure. I like that tip. All right. <laughs> you got some more tips. Again, this, most of them actually, we kind of covered already, you know, it was the, you know, you know, sticking with that normal schedule, even as adults, we love a nap. We love pool time. We try not to spend like seven o'clock in the morning until one o'clock in the morning, basically at a park. (laughs) Um, if you don't need to, you know, and just not ever planning because if you feel rushed or you feel like you need to be somewhere and you can't get there on time, you just have that constant feeling like you're missing out on something. We go often. And I have to say, even going, say we don't get to Epcot until three o'clock in the afternoon and the park closes at nine, no matter what, Epcot always normally closes at nine. We still manage to do everything. It's nice. just kind of like, you know, prioritize, <laughs> figure it out. And, but if you have that constant feeling, I have to be here in 20 minutes, it's like, it's not going to happen. And then you just feel like you're missing out and you're yeah. taking away from what's in front of you. Kind of a feeling. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think you got a ride tip here. Do the lightning lanes. Did you do that? Well, you did them because of the DAS pass, but. So that was different this trip. I sent my aunts. Uh, I always say I send them because I do everything for them. I even did their Ratatouille and their first choices of lightning lane first thing in the morning, yeah. even though they were there and I was home. So I have done extensive research on lightning lane. I have figured out how to manipulate. I don't want to say manipulate the system because it sounds negative, but it's pretty advertised how you can stack passes. Yeah. So, you know, by the time the park even opened at nine o'clock, they had Ratatouille plus two lightning lanes already. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, you can do get your first light, regular lightning lane at seven, and then you have to wait two hours, but you can get a second. So at that point, I was able to get the nine, like another one right at nine o'clock. So by the time the park even opened, they had two lightning lane passes. Okay. Plus Ratatouille. I don't know. It's funny. I keep seeing different things. Like Disney said, you're only going to really use lightning lane two to three times a day. It's just not true. Okay. Um, I think, you know, you gotta, you gotta do research. You gotta, you know, unfortunately it is what it is. And it, and so it how stinks. Do you get like, the two, so you, you get one at seven o'clock. Yep. And then you just have to wait two hours. So it's okay. two. So basically what it is, there's a whole system to it, but at seven o'clock, you can claim your first one. It has to be two hours after the park opens. So I always try to get like the harder one to get. So say Epcot, I got them Ratatouille. And then I think I was either, I think I got them Soren. So I got Soren for like 1130. Yeah. But at nine o'clock, I was able to claim another one. And I grabbed them one right at like 930 for maybe test track or something else. Okay. So yeah. it was basically that's And then from there, you could just keep taking one. Oh, that's with the Genie Plus, not the... That's not oh, the Lightning yes, lane. I apologize. I always confuse them together. Yes, Genie Plus. Lightning Lane is Ratatouille, right? That's yeah. a... The purchase one, yeah. Okay. In my head, Genie Plus is where you like, just plan. I don't know. Yeah. Frozen, Frozen, you got to buy it. Pay for as well, correct. Yeah, Frozen and Ratatouille at this point. So I wonder what they're going to do with Galax, uh, Gardens so of the they Galaxy. They already said... They had announced something for the summer, I did see... And it was, I think a few of them were coming off of that as just like a summertime thing. Oh. Now, I don't know if Galaxy Guardians of the Galaxy is going to get put on it. I think Frozen, I think everything at Magic Kingdom, and I don't remember what else. Mm. I, I want to say it was something else at Hollywood Studios, but they were coming off of it and going on to like the regular version. Oh. Now they were saying it was only supposed to be till September, but again, I think that's because they knew Galaxy was coming out. Hopefully, Tron is going to be coming out in yeah. the very right. future. Yeah, so we'll, They've been testing trains and stuff. We'll be on uh, the lookout for changes to that whole yeah. situation. Stay, yep. stay in tune with your Facebook groups, bloggers, yeah. and your yeah, exactly podcasters. All right, let's finish up then. This is one of these. Traditions our good friend Wendy Fox talks about when they get back from their trip, they ask everyone in the family, what's one moment that's going to stick with you from this trip? Some, something really memorable. I said it a few times already, but New Year's Eve, it really was special. Yeah. Again, we kind of did an adult version and we didn't make it to the park, but it still was like that good. It was, you know, we did fancy dinner and yeah. we had, I even had uh, the grocery team deliver bottles of champagne to the room and I packed them in my bag and, Nice. Um, we popped champagne on, you know, on the dock of the Grand Floridian to watch the fireworks. It was just really special. It was nice. It was a nice time. Would you do New Year's Eve again? Yes. If I could, if we could, we would have gone to the park during the day, but it was yeah. just as good not to be in the park. Would you do it differently? Would you maybe do Epcot? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe wing it? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Probably, probably not wing it. No, like me. <laughs> Fantastic. This was great talking to you. Thanks for coming yeah, on the show. Yeah, it was did, too. Did, uh, did we cover everything? Yeah, for sure. Awesome. For sure, for sure. Yeah, definitely. And stay I, like in I touch. said, uh, maybe we'll do a run. Maybe we'll do another one after the run, the run weekend in November. Yeah. How Who many knows? nights is that Listen, for? My husband already said, uh, he's like, we're not going to go at all in between. I I'm famous for, I happened to get an email from an airline. Mm -hmm that flies local and it'll be, you know, $110 for both of us round trip. And I find a Disney room and we end up there from Friday to Monday. Right. <laughs> so you never know. <laughs> We've done that several times. How long is your run Disney trip going to be for? So that's just a Thursday to Monday trip. So we'll get there Thursday day, okay. uh, run Friday. She runs Sunday. So we basically have all Friday and Saturday and then we'll yeah. come home Monday. That's typical for the yeah. run events. Fantastic. Yep. Well, yep, great yep. meeting you. Yeah, same, same here. If you finally. see Rob, let him yes. know. Do you talk to him? Early? Yes, especially Still? about Disney. Uh, <laughs> but yes. Yep. That doesn't surprise me. No, yeah. Uh, his cousin, and until we know each other, we'll be at a wedding together in a couple of weeks. So yes, I will see him then. All right. Well, I'm going to message him that we talked. Yeah. And you're yes. going to be on the show. Thanks for thanks for contacting me. We'll uh, stay yeah. in touch, and uh, we'll talk to you again. Sounds great, Kurt. I appreciate everything. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Thank you so much, Rob, for referring Dana to us. She is a fantastic and knowledgeable listener. 
Great job with all the tips and thanks for sharing your trip report with us, Dana. Oh, I got some shout outs. All the April Geek Meet gang. <laughs> Samantha Kuhn was on FaceTime with me a couple times yesterday and I was getting a little bit emotional. They were on the Mexican boat ride. They had a huge crew between like 25 and 30. I don't know. It was just amazing. They had Dapper Day and it was so fantastic to see my friends down at Disney World having a great time, including sisters, Selena and Jackie. Bubba Mac, you looked fantastic, dude. Jen and Moynihan win. D and Jeff Opolka. Scott and Karen Daves. Amanda Lamb. Rebecca Rudin. Norma and Daniel Ginger. Travis Dietrich. Andy Hoffman. Tori Hunt. Tony Ann Zarcone. Great job doing karaoke, too. <laughs> Saturday night. Fantastic watching those videos. Jen Pulliam. Trey Nolan. Deirdre Watts. Stephanie Kay, Noreen Van Doren, and Lauren Hawkins. I hope I didn't forget anybody, but that was so great to see you guys. Oh, another special shout out. I was so surprised. I hadn't heard from a longtime listener, and she's been on the show several times. Heather Brainerd with her husband, Rich, just ran into all the geeks, and I was able to see them on video, too. So, so fantastic to see Heather and Rich. I just hope we can get everyone all together on a huge roundtable and record this trip report. So looking forward to doing that. Hopefully we can do that this Wednesday. Another big shout out, someone who wasn't able to go down because she had some health issues, just got out of the hospital, Wendy Fox. We send in all our love to you and get well soon. I know you're feeling a little bit better. I've been in contact with Wendy. Got to have you back in the gang, Wendy. Hopefully we'll get down to Disney World real soon, all of us. I know I've got a June trip coming up, June 4th through the 13th. So if you're going to be down in Disney World, would love to see you and got some friends that are going to be joining us for dinners and, and the like. So I can't wait to see you guys. Definitely tap me on the shoulder if you're down in June, early June, June 4th through the 13th. Love to talk to you. Love talking to you guys down in the parks. I got to mention Travis Dietrich's Give Kids the World campaign. I've got a post out on my website. There's a little tab there for contributing. And he's going to be writing It's a Small World for Give Kids the World. And it's kind of funny because it's a ride that he's we always tease him about because he's not a big fan of that ride, you know, because just hearing that song over and over again. But he says, guess what, geeks? He's doing a super cool thing. He agreed to ride It's a Small World 12 hours straight on May the 14th. He's trying to raise over $3,000 for Give Kids the World. He's almost there. He's like $2,400. So he's still got time. Consider supporting me, he says, with this incredible organization. You can donate $25 by May 7th. He'll put your name on the back of his shirt. If you donate $50 or more by May 7th, you'll get a flatty made by Karen Daves. And that likeness will ride with Travis on It's a Small World for over 12 hours. Don't feel like you got to be restricted by those price points. Any donation, big or small, is fantastic. And he's accepting donations until May 21st. There's a link to the fundraiser. It goes directly to Give Kids the World. And that's just a fantastic thing. Travis will keep promoting that. And I'm sure we'll get you to your $3,000 goal. And how about finding Rob Madiri and his kids for the intro to match up with his good friend Dana Anderson as a uh, recording from like a year ago? But we'd love to have. More intros from our listeners. They're easy to create. They're fun to do. Just record them on your phone. Email them to me at kurt.stone at geekinonww.com. Just tell us your name, where you're from, a fun Disney World or two fact about yourself. And then you go geeking on Walt Disney World with Curtis and the whole Geekin family. And I'd love to have some new ones. And I appreciate all you guys who support the podcast through patreon.com. Patreon.com is where you can pledge a monthly donation to our show. And I like to do some bonus episodes. You can hear them every week. And there's over 113 up out there. I was This week I released one from my G3 trip. And this is at the American Pavilion. I'm with Daniel and Norma Ginger. And we're enjoying Disney on Broadway. It was just a fantastic performance. We got a little bit emotional listening to that. It was fantastic. If you join the inner circle, you will be able to listen to 113 of those bonus episodes. They're from the parks. They're all live recordings that I do when I'm down in Disney World. And I appreciate all of you that support me on Patreon. And we thank you again for supporting Mom and Judy, the Travel in Tierras. Email them when you're ready to book your trip. If you've already booked it and you want to transfer it to them, they would love to help you and be your 
travel guides, travel and tiaras at gmail.com. We are committed to helping you enjoy your Disney World vacations. Reach out to us if you'd like to do a trip report. Book a trip. Review your plans for your trip. Kurt.Stone at geekinonwdw.com. Thanks for going geeking on Walt Disney World with us. We really appreciate you listening and geeking with us every single day. We love you, geeks. Have a magical day, and I hope all your dreams come true. job thank you yes yeah, thank so you for I've got great. like three or four shows that are gonna come before you but not too long yeah about no that sounds great about a month sorry here. for the dog something's happening in my backyard no and he is literally screaming bloody murder and he normally sleeps all night so Actually, i don't know i heard a couple of bark kind of dog is oh that's good he's little yeah, so that's the like only positive guy. It's hysterical why we say he will sleep all day and the minute I go in a meeting with like, not my team, that would yeah. be fine. Yeah. No, it's like when my VP logs on with like all the doctors and like the mail happens to come at the exact same moment. And it's like, great. See, that's when he saves you from the mailman, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, thank you. Thank you. Now, I had three dogs for many years, yeah. but they're all gone now. Oh. Unfortunately, we lost them all over the last couple of years. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. We got some things going on that we probably won't get one for a while. Yeah. He's easy. He's older, um, very small, yeah. normally polite. <laughs> uh, and everyone loves him. So, like, they, when we do go on vacation, they kind of fight over to take him, and it's oh, wow. totally okay. Well, that's good. But it's one of the reasons my husband wants another dog, but it's one of the reasons I'm always like, we travel too much. We do too many things. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. fantastic. All yeah. right. Well, thanks a lot, and uh, have a good night. Yeah, you too. I'll talk to you. Talk again to you. sometime. See ya. Bye. Yeah, sounds great. Bye.